I'm going to give you a brief uh, overview on how to uh, take a single board such as this one here um, and panelize it into something that looks like this, uh, which is suitable for manufacture. Um, obviously, there's a number of things you need to take into account. Um, so you can ensure that when you send it off to the uh, fabricators, they can actually use it. Um, but here, let's zoom in. Um, you can see the actual finished board um, is using, you can't see them on here, but it's using a combination of um, milling uh, to get the smooth edges and V-scoring down the uh, little bits. You can snap them off so it maintains some structure and stability and also means it's very easy to snap these out of the frame once they're all prepared. Um, there's a couple of prerequisites to uh, doing this. Firstly, you need to speak to your uh, PC fabrication house um, and basically speak to them and get their requirements and what they actually want. Um, I use a company called Printing System Circuit Board, uh, some, uh, sorry, Printing Systems Limited, and um, I emailed them and asked them uh, for their re uh, requirements, and they sent me a, a PDF which I'll show you. Um, and it basically shows you how they want their panel uh, laying out their various sizes and limitations, um, the tooling holes and the fiducials and what you need to put on there. Um, so you'll need to speak to your um, your fabrication company to get that information. Um, the second people you need to speak to are the people who make your printed circuit boards. Um, you need to find out what the milling bit size is. Um, I use this company here called Hackvana, who are on IRC, um, on Freenode Network, so you can go on there and speak to them. Um, the, they have advised me that their milling bit is 0.8 millimeter. Um, just as a, if I refer to anything as mill in this um, in this video, then I actually mean millimeters metric, not the imperial. Um, so it's 0.8. Uh, millimeters is the milling bit size um, f uh, for my particular um, production company. So there's a couple of things I'll be doing in this movie. Um, first I'm just going to introduce a couple of shortcuts um, I'll be using heavily throughout the whole video. Um, the first is um, I'll be using uh, CAD Soft Eagle um, to do this work by the way. Um, I'm sure you can adapt this for use in other um, EDA products. Um, Alt F2 in Eagle zooms back to the default view to fit everything in. I'll be using that a lot, um, just so you know. Um, when you see it do something like that, I've hit Alt F2. Um, the other things which I've done in Eagle um, are I've set the control 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 um, to, have, uh, to adjust the grid. Um, now, all those these are in metric. They're actually following the imperial um, grid sizes. They're just I'm just halving each time. Um, so the net result is if I do control one, two, three, four, five, six, it just gives me a fine control over the grid. Um, again, I will probably be using that um, for this example. Um, I'm going to be using a combination of milling and V scores. Uh, there are a number of ways of doing this and snapping boards apart. Um, the most common is mouse bites. Uh, personally, not a big fan of them. Um, I find that it leaves some little, uh, quite a jaggedy bit on the edge. Um, v scoring, if you're not aware of what it is, um, a blade that looks like this um, goes can draw straight lines across your printed circuit board, and it puts grooves in the printed circuit board. So when you apply some force, it snaps at this point. It does leave um, a slight edge on it, which you can tidy up with um, a, a sharp knife or something of the um, similar. Um, so that's basically what we're going to be aiming for. Um, you can see that um, we've actually got the there's a milled out bit here. Uh, we have V scores. These green lines here. Uh, if I just turn all this off, and we're V score. So that's the four lines where my board will be, um, the V-score blade will run down my board. If I press Control A, that brings everything back on and you'll see that puts a nice cut down there, nice cut down there. And these edges here will be nice and smooth because they'll be milled out. Okay, so to prepare the board for panelization, um, a couple of things you need to do. Um, 
you may need to make sure this board is absolutely correct. I would have suggested you've already made this in a single board and you've tested it fully. Um, you need to check that all your text um, is correct on the actual board um, and it looks right. Um, you need to make sure that it's past its um, ERC and DRC. Um, this one probably will have a few failures, possibly not, I've already checked that one. Um, at that point you can save that board. Um, I would make a copy of it, call it whatever you want, PAM. Um, <coughs> delete the resulting schematic and just open just the board file. Um, because you're going to be duplicating this, so um, if it has a schematic it will complain at you. Um, so we need to now, on Eagle anyway, it may be other ways of doing this on other BDA packages. If you've got a file run ULP and you run analyze.ulp, what that does, um, it's fairly simple, but it just makes a copy of the, um, the T names layer um, and um, it makes a new layer on top of it um, called T um, underscore T names layer 125. Um, that's important because if you duplicate this board, the um, the actual names of the uh, components will increment. Um, so, for example, that on the next board will be something like C10. Um, and if you send a bill of materials to your uh, assembly plant and you say C2 is a whatever capacitor, um, on one board it's going to say C2, C, um, C2, on another it might say C10, on another it might say C20, etc, etc. So by running panelize.ulp it actually just makes a copy of the name, which doesn't increment when you duplicate the board, um, and that's quite important. One thing I've noticed when using the panelize.ulp um, is it doesn't copy the actual font uh, that you use. Um, I prefer to use vector um, on my descriptions of my names of the actual items, the actual parts, um, and I, I know it's subtle, but you want to get it right. The underlying uh, name text is vector, and on the next one on this, uh, get it, um, that one there isn't vector. So the little command which you can run, which I'll leave there, basically if you run that, it just switches all the text on the unscon T names file to vector. Um, so you'll see they're now all matched up. Okay, so we're now ready to start panelizing this design. Um, so the first thing is you need to duplicate that, but what I prefer to do initially is um, make sure you press Ctrl A to select all the layers. Um, and then if you just select the whole design, um, and then we'll just move that out of the way. Um, so we've got a copy over there. That's the center point, that's zero, zero. So I tend to um, make a copy of everything there, copy group, and we'll just stick that. Um, I suggest you wide his grid for this. Um, and then if you've got that there, we'll make another copy of that. And we'll just roughly place the boards where we want them. And that there. And I've done the copy, I know it's deselected it. And that should do it. And then just one more. So copy group. Like say if you have a schematic um, on this, it will not let you copy these groups. There we go there. Right, so now we've got four of the boards. Um, you'll notice if we go down here, if we turn off um, all the layers and just put the um, T name on, that all the components have incremented. So you've now got R38 and stuff. Um, however, because we ran panelized at ULP, all the boards have still got the actual original number on underneath, which helps. Right, so my next suggestion is um, if you go to view grid and just set a 10 millimeter grid, um, you can then pick the dimension layer and just put the outline. Um, so we'll just click dimension. Um, and probably actually go for a 5 mil grid there. Um, so we just need to draw some outlines on here. The actual width for your outlines can be zero. Um, if you just pick that, oops, no. um, if you just pick dimension, where are we? Dimension left twenty. Um, so we'll pick that one, and uh, we'll just basically draw basic frame around the lot. 
we'll, we'll adjust this later on. Um, just so we've got some idea where we're going. There we go. So that's a frame round in the dimension layer. So from here I might just quickly put the V-scores in. Um, V-scores um, are actually on layer 120 something. Hang on. No, sorry, 102. Um, I prefer to change the colour to something I can see properly, so just change the green. Um, now, on an example, we're going to have a V-score down here, 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 and here. <clears throat> so I'm just going to change that to V-score and just quickly draw a V-score down there. I mean, that's not correct, but so let's just find out what the actual X value of that is. So that's, that line down there is at minus 71. 0.12. So we copy that, go to the V score and paste that in. So we've now got a V score which cuts down there. Um, you can just copy that and we'll go put one roughly there, one there. Oops, one try again. And one there. Because remember the rest of it up here is going to be milled out. So, um, so that is a that coordinate. So we'll just put that in. So, and that one is at 2.54, so we'll just put that in there. And that one's going to be cutting down there at that corner. Okay, <clears throat> so we just do control A, you can see now um, we've got some B scores in there. So the next thing we need to do is um, we need to bring this up here. Now you don't have to v-score the whole lot, um, it's easier to do it that way. Um, so for example if we just switch on just the dimension layer and the v-score layer, if I actually just leave the dimension layer on. So you're going to get a cut down there, so really you don't actually need um, that um, dimension there, we can just bring this in. Um, however, sometimes it's a bit neat to just to actually do the edges and just, just v-score ever so slightly, um, which I'll show you how to do in a second. So let's just get rid of um, that one there. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to do a mill. Uh, the mill, milling bit's going to come down here. Um, now we know that the milling bit diameter is um, 0.8 millimeters, so if we just take the y dimension sorry, uh, the, of that line there, this needs to be 0.8 millimeters up from that. So I just bring up my calculator and add 0.8 to it and copy that and paste that in there and paste that in there. So now we've got that line there which is 0.8 millimeters and that's the width that so the milling bit will come along here. Uh, and make a nice little hole there uh, without having to go and do multiple. Um, you can leave a big gap if you want, it just means it's going to take more time to mill it out. It doesn't need it, um, that's just a single pass on the milling bit which speeds up the production of the board and will make your fab happy. Um, so I'm going to make it so that the actual snap point is actually quite small here. Um, so I'm just going to take a note of that X dimension there, um, put on the calculator just for reference. Um, and then I'm going to delete that. I'm just going to go to a slightly finer grid. And that'll do it. Um, and it's put the V score there on. I'll just turn that off a second. Okay, so we click the dimension layer. And I'm going to basically, it doesn't have to match up it exactly, we'll, we'll fix that later. So I'm going to go down to about here and then up to there. So we, I'm just basically sketching out roughly what I want out of this. Um, right, so the end of that line there is at minus 71, so that to match up needs to be, it's already actually at the point, so all I need to do to get that match up is put the end point of that in there, 
and that's now matched up. You've got to be careful, these have got to match up exactly. If you don't match up, um, it can cause all sorts of problems. Um, now, as discussed, um, the milling bit is 0.8 mil, so that's minus 71.12, which is already in there. You need to go back another 0.8 mil. So we'll go there, we'll put that in there. And that tidies that up and gives us another channel which is 0.8 mil. So now we just need to match all this lot up. Um, so this is at minus 71.92. So that needs to end that there. And then that line to match up there needs to come up to that point. So so now you've actually got a nice little channel which the milling bit can mill out. Um, now, just for consistency, um, if that's at 54, like whatever, it doesn't really matter. Um, let's just put that in my calculator. If you keep a consistent measuring um, scheme throughout the whole thing, it will make life a little bit easier. So as for just an example of that, um, currently that's at 54.69, whatever. Um, um, I'm going to make it so that this point here is 15 mil under that, so that I know that for every single board. Um, so just take 15 off that, put that in there. So I now know that that's 15 mil. So I'll do the same for this board um, and for the other boards around it. So you can now you can now see that um, if we just turn the V score there on. That the milling bit's going to make a nice um, mill round there, but that point there, that's solid PCB, so that's going to actually snap away at that point. Okay, so let's just line this up. Um, so let's just get that line there where it should be, so that should match up now. Bring that there, just turn the uh, V score up again. Um, so now that needs to match up with that. So that is at so look minus 1.27. So plus 1.27. Right. And as discussed before, that line there needs 0.8 mil from that line there. However, it should be the same as that. So I should bring that in. Like that, and that was right. Just all the way checking. Point A should be seven point nine two. Yep. Um, and again, for consistency, I want that fifteen mil from that. So that is one point two seven. So that's going to be fifteen mil on top of that. It's going to be sixteen point two seven. So that's horizontal there. 16, Do that. So you can see there fairly quickly, um, we've now got our root. Um, and we're going to do something similar on this side. Um, just take a note of the vertical on that. And uh, uh, yeah, this is slightly different because of the po that point there. Um, isn't too much of a problem, but you have to be very careful that you match that up because if you don't match that up, um, it's going to cause problems. So it might just be worth taking the full coordinates of that. Um, so just that's the so you know exactly where it starts and where it ends. So let's just delete that, and um, we'll just do another line there fairly quickly, and that needs to match up now. So it's going to be about 51. On there, apply. And the X is going to be there. 
So that's now matched up. It's very important you get those matched up. If you don't, you're just going to the problems. Um, okay, so we're going to actually draw another little, um, something like another um, bit down the middle here. So I've sort of got that top one wrong. But let's just delete that and create that again. But this time we're where I actually want it, which is down like that. So we need to just make sure this is getting framed up properly now. So um, that's obviously not right. That needs to come back a bit. Um, so that's somewhere down about there. And uh, we're going to have a line up there like that. So we see we're going to aim for this sort of pattern on the other side. So um, again, this is going to be milled. So just get rid of that. And again, the old 0.8 mil comes into play, so this time it's minus 0.8 mil. That goes there. There you go. And same with that bit there, that goes to that. And so you can see, this is mainly just using previous lines to match up. And draw like a frame. Yeah, missed a bit there. What's going on there? Oh yeah, I redrew that didn't I? Right, so um, that plus point eight. So basically, using your um, your actual board as a reference point, um, you can make all the other lines reference that basically using the 0.8 mil of the routing bit and using your own whatever standard you choose in my case 15 mil from that side and that side so this is actually where it starts to get a little bit easier because we've already got the x point of that which is there so we can just do that extend that one down like that and I'm just sticking another line in there as uh, um, that's there. So that's there. Now I'm just going to get that lined up there, which is slight. It's going to be that, I think. Nope, no. Yeah, sometimes I get it wrong. That one there. It's further up, isn't it? So that goes down to there. So that should match. And you see his little notch on there. I think that's yeah, it's on all the boards, so that's fine. Right, so again we know that that there is 16.27, so we can just adjust that line there so it stops at that. That should match up. So what we've got now is, uh, as you can see, the frame is beginning to build up around there. We'll just go back to our dimension layer, stick another line in there, and just has to be fairly rough. Actually, sorry. That goes there, and it goes there. So you can see, we're just going to basically do what we did on the other side. Um, so. Again, 0.8 mil. See, there's just a slight gap there, you need to fill that properly. Can't stress enough, you have to be very careful to make sure these match up or it can cause problems. Um, so, then finally, um, where are we? 
was there to there, and that one extends up to that. Right, so that's your next one. Uh, and then finally, we've just got to finish this bomb bit off here. Don't think that's touching. No, that's right. Okay, so I'll just quickly bring that up to the top of that. And bring that across there to that one. Know that x dimension there, get rid of that, delete that, can bring that back. Already got that in the clipboard, and then finally, we've got that dimension there, bring that down to that, and that should match up. So, there you go. Um, now, if we turn the V scroll layers back on. In the step there you go. You can now see that you're gonna get a nice mill there and you're gonna get cut down there. So you snap that entire panel off, you snap that off, and the board will just literally drop out. So and you basically just repeat that for the rest of them all around the board. Um, now let me just um, one thing you gotta remember. The rooting bit is circular, it's, it can't do that. If you think about the circle, uh, so that's the shape of the rooting bit. Um, sorry, radius and um, four. So that's, that's your rooting bit basically. Um, so it's going to come down, um, down there like that, and it's going to stop there. So it can't do those right corners. So what you need to do is use the mitre tool with a radius of 0.4. And click that. And then it can do that. And that's perfect. Now, just a word of warning. Eagle is a bit crap at certain things. Um, you can't unmitre that. So once you've mitered it, you can't go back to zero and undo it, just doesn't do it. If it was just a straightforward one like um, that, the 90 degree corner there, just an example, like that, you can actually unmiter it, but you can't do it where you end up with a two next to each other like that, for some reason. So again, it can the rooting bit can do that 90 degrees, because it can go all the way here then down, but it can't do that there. So. Let's just mitre those corners off. So again, it can do that. It can't do that. Can not do that. Can do that. It can do that. But it can't do that. So you see, we've just basically applied a 0.4 mil mitre, uh, which obviously is the radius of a 0.8 mil rooting bit. Um, and that basically, again, if you turn your v score there back on, you can see that the, root, uh, the rooting bit is going to come down here and it's going to just taper off and that will snap nicely um, on that position of point. So you just need to rinse and repeat exactly what we've done there for the other four panels. Um, one other bit of advice, you just turn that on, you, uh, all the layers on, you're going to get now um, a big cutting disc chopping all the way down here and you've got a uh, copper pot um, right up to the very edge of that, um, which obviously um, can get torn, um, the rooting bit can actually tear the, um, the copper, so to avoid that what I tend to do is you click on the polygon tool and then you do select the um, T restrict layer and you draw a polygon along the actual root, uh, V score line like that 
And then what we'll do is we just get the actual vertical dimension of the that one. And uh, where do we calculate? Go back to the calculator. Um, and if we, I tend to just um, put the keep out there, um, 0.25 millimeters each side. So if we add 0 0.5 to that. Do that, and then if we um, sometimes I struggle with the maths. Um, So if we just subtract 0.25 from that, and then if we just add 0.5, you now got uh, a nice half a millimetre wide keep out. Now if we click a uh, rat's nest, you'll notice that the copper pulls back from the V score just enough. Uh, and you can copy that on top of itself and then just rename that to be restrict and that will do the same for the bottom left. Um, you need to do those along your P scores to avoid any uh, problems uh, with the uh, the cutting uh, the blade ripping copper up it just pulls it back just enough just to avoid um, obviously the SMA connectors um, they don't get pulled back, but that's not a problem on this particular design because the SMA plug will cover up any copper tears on there anyway. So at this point here, you can basically you can see the basics on that one corner of the panel. You just basically need to rinse and repeat what we've done uh, here on the other uh, three panels. Um, obviously, um, putting the, uh, the top and bottom restrict layers in there to stop the copper tear, um, and at that point, then you can work on the actual frame. Um, I'll just give you another little tip for that. A lot of the um, the manufacturers um, want the um, the actual tooling holes on a on a 10 mil grid. So if you basically change the grid size to 10 mil, um, and we'll create a some tooling hole, which in the case of my fab, uh, three mil. Now, I don't quite get them. Well, actually, on this design, you can get them in on 10 mil. Um, but you can basically you can create them externally. I'll show you what I mean by that. Um, so I'll just create one there. Um, do and hang on. Not on that one. And we'll just move that there. So there you've got um, four tooling holes that are exactly on a 10 mil grid. Might not match your frame exactly. So what you can then do um, is you can select them and you can move them. Um, and at that point, you can just adjust the grid size to something a bit finer. Um, so, for example, and I can place them exactly where I want them um, because I know that they are actually spaced out by 10 mil. So the actual position of them doesn't really matter. Um, so, see there, we've now got some 10 mil separated um, tooling holes uh, that fit on whatever frame I want, um, even if it's you know because it, obviously it's not quite 10 mil spacing. So at this point, I'm just going to switch to the finished uh, design. Um, this was obviously one that I did earlier. Um, slightly different on this one, I actually. Um, you can see how I've. Um, actually not going quite up as far as that the design I was working on earlier but this is the one that actually went to the fab um, so you basically got like a that's that's solid PCB there and that's solid PCB there and this is all uh, milled out um, obviously you've got your tooling holes um, that's just a large mitre on the corners so you don't cut yourself and um, the only extra that I added onto this is some uh, fiducials um, a lot of um, uh, fab 
uh, fabs only want three on a board. Um, some actually may want um, three on each individual board uh, for pick and place machines. Um, doesn't really matter where they are generally, um, as long as you have them um, obviously away from each other so it can line up. Um, you obviously pay particular attention to the fact that it's got the keep out layers. Um, take your time over this bit, just make sure it's all right, make sure your corners are all mitered off um, properly. Um, it'll just speed up um, in the actual when it's being milled uh, and your uh, PCB fabricator will uh, like you for it. Um, like I said, these are all 0.8 mil, so that's just a single sweep on the milling um, bit. Um, on this particular design, actually, I didn't run a... You see, that's all milled out there as well, um, but it should be quite secure because we've got um, got like a nice strip of PCB there and there and up and down the sides as well. I would always try and aim for a full contained frame. Um, you don't basically want um, no... Um, uh, what is it, tabs at the top or the bottom, or it does lose quite a lot of um, structure. Um, so, for example, if we didn't have these side tabs on, it would only take a fairly small knock in the middle of that board to uh, split the frame. Um, so, having the side uh, tabs on not only gives you somewhere to put the tooling holes, but also gives you a lot more mechanical stability. I hope that um, helps you out um, on designing uh, your printing circuit boards. Um, if I've skimmed over that too quickly, or if you want any more assistance, um, join the um, channel on IRC on Freenode Network called um, Hash Hackvana. Um, I'm on there um, as Upu, and you can come and have a chat with me on there. Thanks for watching.